Hello guys, my name is Cincy Day and welcome back to a brand new episode of Game News. Now we actually have quite a few interesting stories today. Uh, to start off with, we're going to be talking about Mass Effect Andromeda. You know, it came out, it has had issues so far. Uh, a lot of them have to be, uh, not graphically, but with, with the models and the characters' facial expressions. And I've been playing the game and I've been enjoying my time with it, but uh, another flaw I've noticed is that there are some serious inter uh, instances when the FPS or frames per second actually drop uh, in certain cutscenes and sometimes the um, uh, certain things won't load in correctly which isn't good at all but um, uh, the, some of those have been somewhat minor I've been enjoying my time with it I know a lot of people have complaints I have certain complaints about it but I'm still having fun with it but uh, one of the I don't know, big issue I see is with a, a character Sarah Ryder Sarah Ryder Ryder um, who is a, a, one of the playable main characters that you can put and her model her face especially is just off-putting to me it's really creepy I don't know it just I don't like it it makes me feel uneasy and uh, actually in the next update the patch uh, 1.05 Bioware has made a kind of a new and tweaked the model for her face and I was looking at the pictures that were posted and I'll put them out for you guys it actually looks a lot better, it looks a lot nicer, cleaned up, doesn't look creepy, and I actually think it's a very, very big improvement. So it's very cool that they are taking the time to fix the game, which it should have been fixed when they released it, but that's another story for another day. But I, I do enjoy what they're doing, taking their time doing it, so hopefully they can continue this and try and fix all the issues of the game, because I do think it has potential. Um, it was just kind of... It was rushed out, I think, a little bit. Should have time, should have taken a few more months in the oven, but it got pushed out, and we got what we got, and I'm enjoying it so far. But uh, it still does have things that need to be fixed. Anyway, guys, that's uh, this story. So let's head on to the next one. Okay, guys, and for the next story of the day, we're going to be talking about Persona 5. Now, I have you know got Persona 5 the first day release. I love it. It's an amazing game. Incredible. If, if you're fans of the series, go pick it up. If you're new and thinking about it, I would also recommend picking up. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go check it out. It's a very stylistic, unique game, and I'm having a total blast with it. I love the Persona series. Let's see, I've played P3, P4, and now I'm on P5, so I'm very excited to play it. What I played, it seems amazing. But it's not all good news. Uh, Atlas uh, is actually putting like copyright strikes and claims on people's videos if they're playing too far into the game. Uh, hitting um, which which sucks um, and I think it's a little old-minded I understand why they're doing it and in my what I will what I think is because uh, Persona 5 is a heavily story influenced game and so they don't want certain parts of the story to be spoiled or they come out and so they're kind of saying you can play up to a certain point but after this point that's where a lot of the uh, main situations and, sp and spoil uh, spoilers of the game come in. We don't want people to play them. I still think I don't know if that's that's not a great publicity thing to happen for a game, um, which it, it sucks. I understand it. I still wish they would take it away and say play as much as you want. And I think it's a great tool, uh, well, both with uh, YouTube and Twitch, to get a game to reach out to more of an audience and actually get sold. It's a very useful thing to have. And so uh, while it is, you can still play parts of the game on YouTube and that'll help sales somewhat. I still think it's not a good thing that telling, putting strikes on people's uh, channels and that for playing it up to a certain point. I just think that's a little short-sighted. But on Happy Nerds, uh, there's a report came out that Personified shipped uh, 1.5 million copies and actually it's, uh, really surprising numbers for like uh, Persona as a series and I know that's shipped um, which is different from like sold but even so that's a, the extremely large amounts for this game to be uh, shipped and I'm very excited by it I really hope that uh, more people get into the series and that it sells well uh, because I do like I like Atlas as a studio they make a lot of amazing products and I love Persona so I want to see it do well but anyway guys that's kind of been the good and the bad of it uh, but tell me what you think so let's move on to our last story guys okay guys and for the last story of the day we're actually going to be talking about Square Enix now Square Enix had an, an interview and with the CEO and they talked about a few number of things but the thing that kind of uh, well uh, let me start off with some of the things they talked about their smartphone games 
Final Fantasy 15 DLC that might be coming, as well as uh, doing more for Final Fantasy's what 30th anniversary. But uh, an interesting piece of news that I saw from it was that they are going to try and be focusing uh, more on the Nintendo Switch, and uh, it seems more than more on the Nintendo Switch than the Xbox Scorpio, and I think that's interesting. Um, I don't know, uh, because I would think Scorpio is a bigger piece of hardware and has more specs on it, and I think more of their games would be bought on that system. But on the other hand, um, Square Enix is, I think, a Japanese-based company, and Nintendo is also Japanese-based. So I can see where a partnership and, uh, would, be, would be made between the two is to have friendly ties. And also, uh, Nintendo Switch is like the hot commodity right now. It's the newest con uh, console kind of to come out. It has uh, good, well, and it's kind of waiting, well, I mean, it has Legend of Zelda, and it has a few good games, but uh, so some really good Square Enix games would probably be a big hit on the console, and it's a very, it's like a new market to sell on, and I can, I understand why Square Enix is going for it, I just thought it was very interesting to actually have them come out and say that we're going to be putting a lot more focus on the Nintendo Switch, which I also think it's very, a good sign for the Nintendo Switch, which hopefully they have a lot more games, which was an issue that the Wii U had at some points in its lifetime, was that, for long stretches of times, it didn't have kind of big releases of games, you kind of waited months in between. Anyway guys, that's been the news stories of the day. Tell me what you think about them. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this episode of Game News, please leave a like, favorite, and of course, hit that subscribe button, and I really appreciate it. As always, guys, guys, my name is Cincy Day, and I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Hope to see you in the next one, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. See you later, guys.